Yes. Hello. Oh, all the babies are saying hello. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Oh, dear. Where is everyone? There they are. Hi, everyone. Okay, that's enough, Lola. Thank you. Okay, that's enough. Thank you, thank you. Hey, everyone. It's Rita from Mystery to Do the Rescue here for today's Cricket Chat Thursday edition. Um, this is a every day at 9 o'clock, Monday through Friday, free broadcast that focuses on cricket and how to use your cricket machines, any any cricket machine just about. And um, we do all kinds of crafts, but we mostly focus on paper crafts. So if you're interested in paper crafts, this is the um, this is the place for you. Um, and today's craft is going to be talking about um, writing with like with your pens. I've seen a lot of people asking about uh, pen writing and how to create something for pen writing. And I wanted to show you these really adorable um, cards. They're Valentine's Day coloring cards that are um, from Cricut Access. But I'm going to show you how to make your own as well. But um, there are three that are in Cricut Access. There's a an owl, a whale, and a dinosaur. There, I think there's also a a bee, a bee. Like it says, bee mind. Let me check. I, I seem to recall that Cricket's not been um, behaving. Um, Design Space has not been behaving very well today. I've noticed a couple of little problems. But I'm looking for that B mine, B mine. Oh, there's a lot of B mines, but there's one that is a B mine uh, coloring card, and <clears throat> I hope I can see it. Ah, uh, B mine. All right, cannot, cannot see that. So, um, so you know what? We can't see it, so we can make our own. So let's go back to uh to my canvas and I'll just show you. <clears throat> so the way these work is, um, they are, there's writing and cutting and it's a scalloped edge. Um, and then you'll see these two little sort of, they almost are like finger holes, but what they are is, um, they're holes so you can put crayons in there. So, um, somebody came up with this idea a few years ago and it's really cute. I like to put a little spin on it because, um, I, I have this thing about Valentine's. I do not like those CVS Valentine's or wherever the Walmart ones that are like one by three and you can barely write on them. I mean, I think a Valentine, if you're going to go out and by Valentine's. It should be like at least three by five, right? And um, when I was a kid, they used to come in envelopes too. But anyway, they've really not done well since then. So I am like, I am advocating that you not buy them and just make them. They're so much fun. Um, and that's, you know, Fun, fun, fun. Um, so there are three that are already made and um, they have actually little sayings on them. This one here, I left the to and from on there, but um, <clears throat> I took it off. I think I took it off here. What I like to do with the Valentines is I like to add a shape to the back of it. And I will give you this... Um, I like to add a shape for, for, you know, like for it being a uh, thicker, sturdier Valentine, right? So I'd like to add a shape. Of course, my favorite shape is square. And um, I'm going to actually uh, arrange it to the back. And based on this, this is uh, sized at, it's kind of big, actually. It's sized at 4.6 by 6.8. So let me just change it to like four, four, maybe. 
Okay. So it's a four by five. Now you could just put this here and, and size it by hand like this, or you could use your offset feature, which would be kind of fun, right? So let's try the offset with this. Let's go to offset and we'll do a quarter of an inch with the corners and hit apply. There we go. And you could change this to either patterned paper or colored paper. And then your blank, uh, you know, with the crayons, your bank, your blank Valentine looks much better, I think. So you can either use a, some kind of square that you can do behind, or you can do your offset. I really like the offset feature. Um, let's also show you there's some brand new, um, there's some brand new images for these. So I want to go to, I'm going to hit new. I'm going to go to images and I sure do hope that this is going to show up. Okay, here it is. Here is the, this is a unicorn one and it's a coloring card. Now th these are all new. I'm going to hit this triple dot right here. And then I'm going to go to view image set. And it will bring me to an image set that has, oh, just oodles. There's ducks, teddy bears, horses, spiders, dragons, um, uh, monkeys, everything, crocodiles, tigers, dogs, whales, everything you could think of. So if you wanted to um, make these, you just click on these. I'm going to click on a couple. There's a dolphin one. Um, and let's see, add them to my canvas. Hi, Penny. Hi, Carrie. Hi, Bran. Hi, Faye, Dawn, and Annette. Yeah. So, um, so of course, Annette, because she's my little joy friend, my joy machine friend, she said they look like insert cards and they are. They don't require any, um, <clears throat> any glue, really. Let's take one apart. So here is a um, dolphin and this could be caught on your joy too. This is a great thing. So if you ungroup it, you'll see behind it is a whatever color you want to make it. If you want to make it, I don't know, blue, then it will show through as blue. Okay. And if you want to add something to these cards, I'm going to show you how to do this. If for some reason you can't find the image you want, like for me, I wanted a hedgehog. I wanted a hedgehog and I didn't find one here. So I, I looked and no hedgehogs for me. Oh, look at this goldfish. So cute. Um, okay. So what I did was I, I took either this design, if you like this design or the scallop design and I, um, ungrouped it. And then you'll notice that there is this uh, goldfish on the top. So what I'm going to do is actually detach. Detach is down here. You know, attach, the opposite of attach is detach. So that's what this does. So when I do detach, it's going to take anything that's attached, like writing or scoring, and it's going to take it off of the actual card that it was going to write on. So let's go in search of a hedgehog. All right. Let's see if this is going to work for me. Hedgehog. So, um, sometimes you find the perfect, um, the perfect image and it's not a drawn image. Oh, yeah, it, didn't, it didn't work for me. Let's try it again. Oh, images, hedgehog. It's one word, right? Hedgehog is one word. I know they're such a cute Valentine, aren't they? So I'm going to show you a bunch of Valentines as time goes on. Oh, look at this. There's a, I think that's 
kind of hedgehog. Looks more like a possum to me. Um, but let's see. Let's uh, choose this. This is one of my favorite hedgehog images. So, because she has a little bow. And this one is actually from a great image set called Create a Critter. If you have little ones and you're making Valentine's or even just like birthday, holiday, whatever, you need to know about this image set. There's actually two of them. One is Create a Critter and the other one is Create a Critter 2. And it has... um. Yeah, that was a 3D hedgehog, Annette. Um, and so this is a great set. And I've made uh, I've made tons of Valentines and just different things from here. There are all these adorable things like this beaver, this cat, this dog, this like Sparky, um, a koala and fish and everything. So look, and it even has the turkey and fall things. It has a crab, has all of these really cute things. Now you might be saying, well, Rita, these are not, um, these are not drawn images. Pfft, it's all right. I'm going to show you how to turn them to drawn images. All right. So I'm going to choose my hedgehog. I'm going to add it to my design my my design space canvas so here we go all right and so we are going to have a look at this um at this image let, let me just i'm going i don't need the background part so i'm going to ungroup it because i really do, do i need that background oh i guess i kind of do nah i don't need it let's take that off all right so here's my adore oh i need it for the nose Okay, here we go. All right. Yes, we need the nose. I didn't realize their noses were black. I thought they were kind of pinky. Anyway, so here's our image. I'm actually going to go all the way back to my original image. And I am going to go up here to operation. First, I'm going to select the first um in the layer. So this is my whole hedgehog. It consists of one, two, three, four, five layers, pink, light brown, brown, dark brown, and black. Now it, you'll see it shows as a basic cut, but we want to turn this into a writing thing. So we're going to change it to pan, but we have to do this whole thing. We have to go and do each layer and change it to pan and make sure that it's all pen. And this is the last one. Oh no, is it the last one? So don't get nervous. Like, oh my gosh, what happened to my hedgehog? Um, this one is still set for cut. So let's go ahead and change it. Where are we? Here we go. Here and we'll change it to pen. Okay. And now we have a, it's, it's, um, it's all connected, but we, now we have a writable, like a pen image that we can put on these if we don't have, you know, if we don't have them now <clears throat> you can, if you want eliminate layers, like I think I would eliminate that layer. And there is a little bit of Right here, there's a little bit of kind of crossover, and you, it, it's easy just to leave that. So, so let's just put that on here. Then I wanted to say sending hedgehogs. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here to the text, and I'm going to just type out sending hedgehogs. Right? It's kind of cute maybe an exclamation point, but I want this to be writing as well. Cause I want to just in one fell swoop, just put in a pan and, and go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go up to fonts right here. And it's like a down box. Okay. And I'm going to filter my fonts to writing. This makes it so much easier easier to find a writing font and you only are going to get those. So this one's kind of cute. It's called BFC Pinewood. 
let's keep looking. There's a whole bunch. And you'll see the ones that are um, part of Access have those A's on it. I like this one. This one's called DTC Apple Cider. So once I choose that, it comes back and it changes it to the writing. Isn't that easy? So easy. And then all I need to do is just make sure that it fits within my um, within my Valentine. So look, isn't that the most adorable thing? And you can put two crayons in here. Really cute. Um, and then all you need to do is select the whole thing and you do need to reattach, okay, which is down here. So now I, I didn't find a hedgehog, but I made a hedgehog. Um, and if you want to just kind of, let's do this one. Um, it's a por porpoise or a dolphin. What can we have it say? Um, you know what? I'm going to, let's do this. We're going to detach the per porpoise or the dolphin. And I want to move it up a little bit, maybe make it a little smaller like that, because I want to have some saying here. Um, and I don't know. Oh, what wow, dollar bills around the crayons. What a great idea, Deborah. Um, anyway, so, uh, so I want to move my little, my dolphin up. So I want to put some kind of cutesy saying here. Hey, when you're stuck, Go to the internet and you just type in, go to Google and just type in something like uh, funny Valentine with a dolphin. Dolphin. See what happens. <clears throat> oh, you give me porpoise. I love it. That one's great. So maybe we should, we should add that one. What's this one say? You dolphinally are the best. A pinch of love from me to you for the crab. So cute. You're dolphinately the best. Which one? I like the porpoise one. So let's go back here and we're going to do text. And what did it say? You give me... I'm going to put it on porpoise, Por P O I S E. Is that how we, they spelled it? Let's go check. P O R P O I S E. Yeah. All right. You give me porpoise. I love it. Now I need to fit this on here. So we're going to play around with the, with the font a little bit and I made it two lines so you can sort of see, um, you can sort of see how you can, if you want to put more than just one line there, um, how you can align it. So we're going to go up to here where it says alignment and we're going to hit center. Now you notice it uses the same uh, font that I had already chosen for the hedgehogs. You can change it if you want, or if that's the font you like, then you can keep it. And so we're going to sort of make it smaller, but it's still pretty big. And what I think I might do is I might, I'm going to put my little porpoise up here. I might ungroup these two lines. That's right here, advanced, ungroup to lines. And I might just kind of move my porpoise up here, the word porpoise. You give me porpoise. How adorable is that? Oh my God, I love it. And then select everything and attach. Um, so that is that. Isn't that great? So there is a whole image set that has these. And, if, and you can make them for whatever. So let's do the bunny for Easter. What can we make for a little, uh, little Easter sentiment? Um, let's say bunny, Easter bunny, Easter bunny, funny, funny jokes. I don't know. Jokes. Um, oh, so look, this is kind of cute. You can do like something on the top and then on the back, 
you could do that. You could turn these into cards if you wanted to. Um, so that's not what I want. I want an Easter bunny pun. That's what I want. Hoppy Easter. That's so cute. That's really cute. So let's go there to our, um, our bunny. So we're going to, um, ungroup this and then we have to detach our bunny because our bunny is kind of taking up a lot of rim and I think I might want to make her sort of a little bit smaller like this and then I'm going to again hit this T for text and type out Hoppy Easter. There we go and we will just shrink it down to size and there looks really good. So um, let's go ahead and attach these. I may need to remove the background on here. Let's do that because if I attach it, it might attach the background to it. So let's do this. We're going to just group it and attach down here. Okay. And then when it comes time to cutting them out, you maybe use white. If you didn't want to use white, you could use like yellow or pink or whatever color you want. And then the background piece can be whatever color you want. If you get some like nice ha Valentine or Easter um, paper, you can put it in there or you can just use any kind of solid paper. So how do these cut let's see are they all the same size let's have a look um yeah they're all the same size they're all so i want to like make them a little bit more mm, i don't know a little smaller because i want to make a whole bunch for let's say i have a granddaughter and she is um she wants Valentine's for her class. Okay. So I'm going to put all the pieces in. I want to make sure I put all those pieces together. Did I? Yeah. And then I'm going to select them all and I'm going to hit align center. Then I'm going to group them and now I can change the size. So when you change the size, you have to change the size of all the layers. So do note, let's ungroup this. See this? These are all the same size, but these are smaller because they need to like an insert card. So when you are going to change the size of something, it's best to do this. Align them all to center and then group. And then when you change the size, whether it's up here or using this little arrow key, all of the parts will change. All of them will change. So here I am changing it. And the largest, the largest piece is the one that is the size that's shown. Okay. So let's change this to a height of five. And I know it looks kind of small, but five is going to look good. So let's go and hit make it. And we'll see, look, there's our two, and I don't know why this is showing here, and a second mat. So let's move it. We're going to hit this triple, and we're going to hit move object, and we'll put it here. We can use um, eight and a half by 11 inch paper for this. And if we wanted to have the exact same color in the background, we can also move these to another mat. You see that? which let's do that. I'm going to hit the triple dot. I'm going to choose move object. It brings up, <coughs> excuse me, it brings up all the mats and then it tells me to choose one or make a new one. I want it to go to this light pink color. So I'm going to hit confirm. Now, once you do that, you do need to sort of move it around on your mat so that things aren't overlapping. If you don't move it around, you'll actually have the two images cut out and they will be cut out like on top of each other. You don't want that. All right. So this is what I did. I put these three on my paper. I'm going to use eight and a half by 11. Um, will the size of the holes be big enough for the crayon? It's a great, I great 
That's great. Um, I'm not sure. You know, you might be right. All right. So let's go back. Let's cancel. And let's make it mm, five and a half. I think that's a great point. Um, it's a little hard to judge if the, the holes are going to be big enough. But so what I would suggest is that you, um, is that you all, um, test it for yourself. I don't have any crayons. I used to have tons of crayons. Don't have them here. And do you see what I just did? I went over to color sync so that they would be on two mats. Now when I make it, you'll see that I have all three of my, um, of my, what you call them, Valentine's. And then here are my three, my three backs. Okay. So then I'm going to hit continue. Now today I'm going to use a very smooth paper because I'm going to be using, um, a pen in here. And when you use like a textured paper, it becomes a little bit difficult with the pen. It's, it's just one of those things that you kind of notice once you've been doing it for a while. And a good example is this is, um, part of a banner that I made for my mom. And you can see, I didn't take my own advice and it looks a little bit kind of hazy because I did it on a very textured background. I would have, I should have turned it upside down or back. Yeah. Turned it around and done it on the smooth side of that, of that paper. Or you can use, um, whoa, what happened? Are you guys? Um, okay. Or you, okay. I thought something was going on or you can use, um, um, you can use the eight and a half by 11 inch paper that you can get at Michael's or also now at Joann's with Park Lane. The Michael's brand is called Recollections. Okay. So let's do the pen one first. And you'll notice here, it says, I just need to load my pen. Now, one thing that I noticed here is that for some reason, it's saying that I need to load midnight pen, but the black pen is kind of the midnight pen. So when, if this happens to you, you can change it and go back and do this. Um, and that's pretty easy. Or what you can do is fudge it a little bit and just go ahead and put your black pen in. Let me grip my black pen. And see my black pen and I'm going to put it in to clamp a, make sure it clicks in and then I'm going to hit the blinking C light. Now, when I do this, it's going to do in the machine's head, it's saying, Oh, I'm, I'm writing with the black pen, but later on I'm going to need the midnight pen, but we're smarter than machines. So what we're going to do is outsmart this machine and then we'll go back and change this whole thing. So it's doing the drawing and then it's going to stop and it's going to give us a um, message on the screen. It's going to stop and give us a message on the screen that says load the midnight pen because it thinks that we have two, uh, two different color pens, but in this case, we only have one. So we just going to trick it. The other thing I want to mention is when you're doing pen work or scoring, or you're doing foiling, which we will do in the future, um, you always are going to be prepared to do those things before the cut. Now, see it stopped because apparently my hedgehog was one color, but my other ones were not. So here's my, my blinking light. So I'm just going to hit that again. I didn't take out the pen. <sighs> Who cares? You know, you have to do you. And, and, um, when I go back, I will change the color of the pen for the hedgehog to be the same color as the other things. And isn't that kind of cool? I think that's cool. So anyway, as getting back to it. So it's going to do the writing first or the scoring first. Now, what happens if you have scoring and writing and cutting? Well, then it goes scoring, 
writing, cutting. Always. It always goes that way. So if you are using a scoring stylus like this, which I think everybody should have, if you're using a scoring stylus and you want to make a card, um, you would first put in the scoring stylus, then you take it out and put in your pen. So you, so you have that um, that's the way in which you do it. But in this case, no scoring. So we're just doing the pen first and then it's going to start cutting. I'm going to, I'm going to talk. Um, oh no, Emmy, you didn't hear the alarm. Um, so swirly, swirly, my gold glitter pen seems to have dried up. Um, so Linda, it depends on, uh, a few things about pens. So pens with Cricut, there are different kinds of pens. So I'll talk about this right now because we're waiting for this all to work. So there's, um, this pen, which is actually a felt tip pen. Let me get one. It's considered fine point, And there is the 0 0.4. That's what's in there. Actually is a 0 0.4. And that number stands for the tip. All right. Now these kinds of pens, 0 0.4 or 1.0, any of the sizes that do not say gel on them. So here's one. This says gel. Okay. So does not, not for gel pens, but in your case, Linda, a gold non-gel pen, you do need to store it with the cap down. That's because the ink obviously is in the barrel and by keeping it capped down, the ink is always going to be flowing to that tip. The problem with gel pens is it has a different kind of tip. Okay. It has like a roller ball tip that the ink comes out of. So your best, I don't know if it can catch that, but it has like a little roller ball. So it's best not to store these like this. I actually like to store them on their side. Okay. And on the side works now, Linda, um, or if you ever have a problem with a pen that you don't think it's lasting long enough, you need to call member care because they will replace it for you. Okay. If you really think, gosh, I used it once and it's dry or you got it and it's like, it's not working for some reason, call member care for Cricut. I'm not member care, so I can't help you with that, but call member care and just say, Hey, um, love cricket, but this pen is dry. What can I do? Or the whole pack of pens. It happens because remember, you know, like crickets, like any other company, they, they produce things and, and then it sits in a warehouse until it's sold. So we don't know how old it is. Like, you know, by the time we get it. So it can happen. Um, but for the most part, I've been able to keep my pens, especially the 0 0.4, uh, alive for a very, very long time. They did. Shirley said, yeah, only one was not working. They replaced all of them, Shirley. Definitely uh, the infusible ink. Um, definitely call member care. And if you don't know the number, it's... Uh, it's one eight seven 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 cricket. I think that's the number for member care. And guess what? If you call member care and you are an access subscriber, you get bumped to the top of the line. So you don't have a whole lot of waiting and they're super helpful. They are just so, so helpful. So, um, there, there's the solution to that, Linda. I hope you can take advantage of that. Um, and let's see, it looks like it's cutting now. Now, this is what I do. And again, this is me with my pen. I take my pen out when it's done writing because I have kind of a memory issue. So I need to, um, to do that so that I won't forget and leave it in the machine. However, I have left some pens in the machine before and it's worked out okay. Um, they, they, you know, they didn't dry out. So, but just good advice, store them with the pen side, the, the tip side down, as long as they're not a gel pen, they're a gel pen, then you can store them either on their side or facing up, up to you. And uh, always put the cap back on really tightly. And if you have a problem 
with pens and it does happen, you know, nobody's perfect. Um, it does happen. Do call member care and they will help you. Okay. Thank you, Loretta. Yeah. Eight, seven, seven. Um, sure. No, no problem. Lori. Um, okay. And so also, uh, wanted to just mention, oh, I made a mistake here. I'm going to show you what the mistake is. So, um, I didn't check the size, but I'm going to show you because I don't want you to do it. Um, and, and then mess up your cut. Okay. So here's my uh, cuts and that's great. I used eight and a half by 11 inch paper, but you see what happened? There is a quarter of an inch margin on the top and sides of the, the paper, I'm sorry, of the mat, always like that. And so when you put your paper on, you have to make sure that the things you're cutting going to be able to be cut out on the size paper that you have. So me, I use this eight and a half by 11 inch paper. And if I want to continue to use eight and a half by 11 inch paper, what I should have done, let me see if I can get another piece. What I should have done if I want to trick the, um, the machine is I could put this a quarter of an inch in like right here or I can go back, sorry, I have this little cough. Um, I can go back here and cancel. Okay. I'm going to say, do you sure you want to cancel the cut? And check here. See how this is beyond the 11 inches? So if I want to use eight and a half by 11 inch paper, I should just change it sideways. And yes, it can write sideways. Isn't that awesome? So now if I put it in the machine like this, the paper like that, it will not cut off my hoppy Easter. Okay. So these cut out so beautifully. Um, and there's so many different things you can do. I'm just going to show you my hedgehog one. And I'm going to also do this cut here just so you can kind of see that there's nothing to them. They're just so easy. And, you know, let your imagination fly. So much fun. So, um, so for the bottom piece, I've got a piece of nice cardstock and I'm going to use that. This is a doodle bug design, petite prints in ladybug. And I'm going to put this in now. Normally I wouldn't use pattern paper because it's not going to be showing through, but I want to show you that you can actually use your double-sided paper if you want to write on the back of your Valentine by hand. Okay. So while it's doing that, let's go down here and put these together. So simple. So, so simple. Um, these ones here don't require glue. So if you don't have the right glue or you don't have any glue or whatever, you're working with the joy and you're not used to working with glue, um, <coughs> then you don't need them. You don't need it. Now you see here, mine cut kind of, eh. um, this can happen from time to time. Usually I cut every single day. And I just want to tell you, if you're just now doing paper cuts, and you want to be, you know, like me, cut all, almost all paper, um, you may find you need to change your blade from time to time. And that's just the nature of the game. You have to always be um, using a nice sticky mat and always be using a nice sharp blade. The blades are expensive, but what I like to do is when they're on sale and I am an access customer, I pick them up in the five pack and they have it here. There's a five pack. I pick them up in the five pack. Plus usually, um, you can get an additional discount if you use my, my special link and code. Okay. So here are my three that I did. This one here, not going to work out. So I might have to do that again. Sorry about this. All right. Okay. So this one's not going to work out because see those little insert things are not showing. Right. So what this one works, you give me porpoise. 
let's take this little piece out. And then we're just going to, just like an insert card, we're going to just go ahead and put this no glue necessary. All right. Just like this. So there it is. And then when you're ready to put in your crayons, you would just kind of move, scotch these up like this. Now, if you don't want to use it like the insert card, you want to use this, this one. Um, I'll try to give you this, this file as well. Um, you don't need to put it in there, but you will need to glue it. And when you glue it, be sure not to glue down this portion. Okay. So here's my glue version that I started to color in and um, that's that. And then on the back, you can write if say your child wants to, um, you know, to Gwyneth, love, Taylor, happy Valentine's Day. All right. Um, or maybe they just want to put from Taylor or happy Valentine's Day, whatever you want to do. Um, and this way you can have the kids help you put them together if you're making class envelope, class things, whatever. Um, this is also a great craft for birthday parties or maybe, um, like I said, Easter, or maybe you want to do Christmas ones. And <coughs> I just think they're really cute, so easy, and um, just fun. It's a great do-to-together craft, okay? So that is it. It's so easy. Um, tomorrow, we are doing a Friday. It's Friday. Tomorrow, we're doing Freebie Friday, and it is the freebie from, and if you're new here, I'll tell you what. So on Fridays, we do freebies. So, um, most of our, most of our watchers are already access customers. And a lot of the, the, um, a lot of the, almost all of the projects I do are from Cricut access. Okay. So, um, so if you don't want to like go out and do your own SV, get your own SVG, um, you don't, you don't have to, you can stay within the, you know, sandbox of, of, design space. But I want to show you that there are quite a few um, sites out there that offer free stuff. Okay. Free SVGs, free fonts, whatever. So tomorrow, so we always on Friday do freebie. So tomorrow's freebie is from actually from this glue manufacturer, Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. And their website is barely dot art. That's it. Barely dot art. And you will see that they have a great website. They have a lot of, uh, glues. This glue is very good. It's been on a shortage. Um, but this is the glue, the one of the glues that I use, but you'll see here up here under products, you can choose all SVGs just like that products see all SVGs, but there's quite a few. I noticed that there is, um, there are a couple that are new. Look at this Valentine's day, right? So that's cool. I'm going to get that one. But, um, if you cannot find the one we're going to do tomorrow, it's an owl. So just type in owl in the search box and there it is. We're going to make this card, um, uh, for the owl. So we're going to click on it add it to the cart. Now you will need to have a, um, an account, which is just like your email and name because they don't send you anything and it's free. You don't have to pay for anything. Okay. Um, so what you do is you go ahead to check out. Once you check out, um, you would, if I already have, see, I have a, already my name and address. I would go to continue with payment, even though there's nothing to be paid right? Once I do uh, continue with payment, then I can download. Okay. Um, download and, oh, look, they're doing a nonprofit. You can add that if you want. Um, and then you just click on this, uh, save my information if you want to, and then hit complete order. Just like that. Once it's done, 
you need to take the image that you just purchased um, and download it to whatever your device is. So if you're using your phone, your iPad, your, I don't know, whatever, you need to, <coughs> your desktop, your laptop, you need to download it. So here it is. There's the winter pack snowy owl. And I'm going to hit, I want to, I already have the snowy owl. So I think I'm going to just hit the Valentine's penguins, which just so cute. And then once it, it goes there, it will go, <coughs> go to your download file. Here is my download file. And um, there is the image right there. So we're going to talk about that. That's tomorrow. Okay. Um, also wanted to remind you that we have, uh, let's see, we have our monthly Zoom call this Saturday. In fact, Lynn, I'm going to be working on trying to connect the Zoom with this software so that everybody can see the Zoom call that wants to. So um, so we're going to stream it, I hope. If not, if you want to be part of the Zoom call, first of all, don't be afraid because we're all friends here. And if you hate the way you look in the Zoom call like I do, I cannot stand looking at my face. I just go up and I turn off the self view. So that way people, it, it's a weird thing to look at yourself, you know, especially on, on a webcam. So don't be frightened about that. Nobody cares. And they see you differently than you see yourself. So please join us and we will post a link, uh, probably tomorrow, tomorrow we'll post a link, Lynn, right? And, uh, let's see, what's the other thing? Oh, our giveaways are still going on. You guys, we only gave away one giveaway, and that was to Loretta. Um, and that was for a Cricut Bright Pad Go. But we're still um, going to be giving away four more Cricut Bright Pad Goes. These are $100 value, and they are uh, just wonderful. Let me see if I can pull it up. But um, all you need to do is follow me. There's no purchase necessary. You just follow me on YouTube, subscribe, right? And if you're already subscribed, you can put your name in again. Um, and you can, let's see, he presses accessories. I think it's under accessories. Um, there it is. See, this is the bright pad. It's a light. It's a really beautiful light. Um, there's all kinds of wonderful things about it. I don't know all the details, but this one here, the go, which is a hundred dollars retail. Uh, we're giving those away. We're giving five of them away this month. We do giveaways every month. Um, a total of $500 worth of giveaways every month. So um, if you don't win one of these now, you you might win something else. It's so easy. You just put your name in. If you're already subscribed, you can just go ahead and like, comment, share anything from my YouTube channel. I read all the comments. And, um, and once you do that, you just click on the link, which will be in the description of the video and enter your name. You put your, your name first and last, and then you, a space or a comma and your email address. The only reason why I'm asking for that information is, um, <clears throat> if when I announce it, you're not on, I need to somehow get to you because I need to put all of these in at one time. Okay. Um, so thank you everybody for coming today. And, um, I hope you have a wonderful day. I know Thursday's kind of a mm, blah day, it's not quite Friday, you know? And, uh, so he, he, we just get some crafting in, you know, uh, it'll make you feel better. I promise. I craft every single day and I thank Cricut for, for that. Um, and I hope you have a marvelous day. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.